Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the, the NASCAR Cup Series event, which is the last of four races that we, that we dealt with this week. We did two Xfinities, and we did the Truck Series yesterday, and we had a decent amount of success. We were basically one driver away from taking down like, two of them, really, and um, it's very interesting to have to, to see four races play out over the same track, you like to feel as though you have a sense of what's going to happen by the time the, the last one kind of, uh, uh, kind of happens. So what I'm going to do for today is I'm going to, again, go over my lineup construction. And again, this is after all the research. I'm not going to get into all the details of the research. But one thing I will tell you is that this is going to be an ownership type day. Um, there aren't any plays that are just complete locks that stand out. So we're going to be able to make some ownership decisions to kind of drive our, our construction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the way I think the track's going to go. I'm going to go through some ways that I think about NASCAR, which have really been working for me, I have to say. I mean, I don't have the same experience as some of the other guys do, but um, I think in a way it almost helps me uh, to not have any preconceived notions about what's supposed to happen and how you're supposed to play and just kind of make my own decisions and my own judgments. Um, so, and I'm going to go through, not driver by driver, but just give you some thoughts. First of all, with regard to this track, it's very difficult to do a lot of passing. I mean, it's not like some of these tracks where you can get like go three wide, four wide, sweep by if you have a little bit better car or whatever. You know, this particular track, it, at, at most you'll have a line of two uh, around the track and what we found over the past couple of days is if you're not in that outside lane you really can't do anything um, so it's very very difficult to pass anybody so what what that means is that unless you are a really fast car and a fast driver just much better than the guys ahead of you I mean it's going to be very difficult to weave through the field um, so to build lineups you're going to need guys that have a chance to get to the front and you're going to need guys that are not reliant on passing some of these studs. You know, like if you have a guy who's like in the 15 hole or something, and you're relying on him to maybe finish top five, you got to get past some really, really good drivers that are starting inside of you, which is very, very difficult to do on this track especially. So those guys are going to be very, very fishy as far as I'm concerned. So the other thing I'd like to say is that, again, uh, I have no preconceived ideas about how to play. I've just kind of learned as I go. And one thing I will tell you is there are some things that I know are, I don't want to say worthless, but some things I know are overrated from an ownership perspective and a salary perspective and a projection perspective. And one of them is 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 track history, okay? Um, and again, I, I, am, I am, don't have the data to support this. Um, I just there's just more feel and more judgment about what I've seen as far as ownership goes and things like that. But people really overweight uh, track uh, track uh, history. They really overweight track fit. Okay, so they you hear a lot of talk about oh this guy's really good at one and a half miles. This guy's really good at two miles. This really good at road racing. Really good at whatever. I'm not saying that's not relevant. I'm not really qualified to say that that's not relevant. All I will tell you is this: is that I mean I've been around the block and. Th those things are are just way overrated relative to their ownership, relative to their, you know, to their salaries and all that stuff. And this comes, I mean, I remember used to do harness racing back in the day, and they used to have all this talk about how some horses were better fit for half mile tracks, and some drivers were better on one mile tracks or whatever. And I'm not saying it's a lot of nonsense, but I'm just saying that, you know, you give me the good car and the good driver, I'll, I'll figure out a way to win. <laughs> And if I won't figure out a way to win, I'll at least figure out a way to overcome the public bias against me. In other words, I'm going to be naturally underowned if um, I'm going to get overly punished for not necessarily having the great greatest track history, especially with the limited sample sizes you have. Um, and that's just sample size theory in general. So that, that's the first thing, all right? Um, so we talk about what kind of what you need on the track. Uh, this week, and we also talked about, you know, overall not worrying too much about track history. So let's start thinking about the guys that are near the front, okay? Because if you can get a guy that gets to the top, 
that can then lead laps and just dominate, you're going to be in really, really good shape. And if you get guys like that that are low owned, that's all the better. So the first guy we have to talk about is Kyle Busch. So Kyle Busch is he's got the pole, and I think I'm kind of I'm, I think I'm benefiting from not having the same type of experience a lot of other people have with NASCAR because I, I've just been seeing this all week and all month, like. Kyle Busch, this is his week. Oh, he didn't do it again. Kyle Busch, this is the time. No, he's not going to do it again. Oh my God, Kyle Busch hasn't led any laps the whole season, so he's got to be. He's got to do it here. Or what's going on with Kyle Busch? We've got to keep playing him. We've got to keep playing him. And uh, listen, this is what I call the John Demott theory. Like if I didn't see it, it doesn't exist. And and I I have just not seen anything. I've seen Kyle Busch win truck races. I, I have not seen anything out of him that that makes me feel as though you know he's got to be some chalk dude okay um to do something that he hasn't done you know like if you are if you have the one hole you've got to either lead a whole bunch of laps and finish top five or lead a decent amount of laps and win like if you don't do that you're you're just not going to be in the optimal lineup um and if you're going to be 50 percent owned which is probably what he's going to end up being today I mean, just it, it goes against everything I believe in. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about somebody making somebody the favorite to do something he just hasn't done. He hasn't led laps and he hasn't won races. So why would I want him at 50%? Now, the problem is, is that, you know, with this particular track, as I said, if you get that lead, um, you know, it's going to be very difficult to, to get past if you're a good driver and have a decent, good to good car. Um, it's not like there's a guy that's just going to weave through the field and blow past you. The only guy I feel as though has a chance of doing that is always Kevin Harvick. So Kevin Harvick is a guy who, you know, he's going to be tough for me to keep out of you know, a decent amount of lineups because even if he doesn't get the lead right out of the bat, I mean, he's always just has the potential to just blow past people. He just does. Um, so the first thing you think about is this Kyle Busch situation. So what I'm going to be doing is... I'm not going to fade him completely. That is one way you could do it, okay? But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that if I do play Kyle Busch, I'm going to just jam in all kinds of low-owned guys. So I have this list of, of guys that are pretty good that are going to be low-owned. And I also have a list of guys that are going to be pretty good and, you know, are going to be chalky. So I want to make sure that with the, the Bush lineups, I'm only playing the low-owned guys. So that's going to be the... Um, the, the trade-off. Okay, I won't fade him completely, but if I do play him, I'm going to end up with a you know decent amount of low-owned guys alongside of him. Uh, the other kind of chalky guy, again, that, that rates to dominate or have a chance to dominate is Chase Elliott. He's another guy who's going to be like 40% owned, and um, it's tough. <laughs> it's, it's tough to get past like all these guys to lead and then get the lead. And, you know, once you get the lead, you could, you could do something with it. But, I mean, he's really just going to get past Harvick and even Keselowski and all these other guys. At, as chalk, uh, it's, it's, ver it's a very difficult pill for me to swallow, just knowing what I know. So, uh, likewise, if I'm going to play, certainly if I'm going to play Bush and Elliott, I'm going to end up with all low-owned guys. As a matter of fact, I might not play Bush and Elliott together in any line, um, just because of what I just said. Now, the, the guys that, that interest me are guys that can get the lead if, if Bush doesn't. You know what I mean? So the first guy, again, call me call me ignorant, but you know Joey Logano is very good. He's led laps this year. He's a, he's a good driver with a decent car. He's only 9,600, and he's got the two-hole. And you know he doesn't rate to get in front because Kyle Busch will probably take the outside route and just kind of get there. But, but what if he doesn't? What if, what if Kyle Busch's car just stinks? What if the reason why he has not led any laps is just because he's just not, just not good? You know, I don't care how he's done like three years ago with this track or whatever it is. Um, you know, if, if, if it, whatever happens, if Logano just gets a jump on him somehow and then can get the lead and just basically wire the field for the first stage at lower ownership, I mean, that's as, I mean, I'm certainly going to take a shot with him, you know? So, so I'm going to probably make one build with, with really just a whole bunch of Logano. And with him, I don't have to worry that much about ownership underneath him. Um, I'll do one build maybe with Bush, and then we got to talk about these other guys that have a chance. So Harvick, again, as I mentioned, he's certainly has a good chance if you know if Bush is not that great, and 
And let's say Logano isn't that great, Carvick can just get to the front, and then he can just dominate this race. So, so I definitely want to get some out of him. The other, the chalk guys that I'm probably going to try to avoid are, are again, these are kind of track history guys, like Truex apparently is a really good, a good history here, and he's got the nine, so he's got some place differential upside, but, but doesn't he really have to get first or second to, to, to really make me have him? Now, again, he's a little cheaper, so he doesn't have that much requirement, but he hasn't done anything. I mean, he won the one race where, where you know, a few weeks back, but... I mean, it's not like he's at chalk. I really need him that much, you know. So, so again, likewise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Truex as kind of in my chalky guys that I'm not going to really take with other chalky guys. Um, uh, other guys in the front, near the front, Kozlowski, kind of a steady guy, probably going to be a little bit too owned. I'm not going to probably take him. The two guys that I'm going to be interested in, in again, as other types of guys that might be able to get to the front if something happens, are these guys in the 4-5, uh, Bowman and Almirola. They're both really cheap, and I've seen flashes of both of them over the last month or two, where they get to the front, you know, they do have some speed, some green, you know, green, li uh, green light speed, and they can get there, and, 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 and then they can lead a bunch of laps. So I think these two guys, as low-owned dominators are really, really, you know, are guys that I'm going to put in maybe, maybe, uh, maybe not together, but maybe one out of two of them in, in maybe 20% of my lineups, 25% of my lineups, which is a pretty decent, decent exposure, I suppose. Um, so let's talk about some other guys. Blaney. So Blaney is, uh, he's, he's my, my kind of guy. He's, he's, Everything I've seen of him this year, he's won races, he's always making moves, he's a really, really fast car, and he's not going to be highly owned. Well, I mean, according to the ownerships I have. So he's a guy that I'm really going to want. He could totally win the race. Um, he's going to be lower owned. He doesn't have the greatest track history. So he's a guy that I really, really like. Um, so you take, now he, let's, let's talk about another guy. So Jimmy Johnson is going to be 28% owned. Okay, 25, 30 percent, and the reason why it's a combination. He's a, he's a low, kind of a low price, and he's from the 20 hole. So they're so this is the type of guy that I want to avoid. Why? Because again, for him to you know get make his you know make it worth it, he's got to doesn't he have to kind of get into the top 10, and he's got to pass like a lot of guys like in front of him that aren't bad. You know, he's got to pass Hamlin. He's got to, you know, like there, there's, it's it's fine, but I have just not seen anything from Jimmy Johnson since they've returned that, that makes me feel as though he has a shot. You know, there's one time where he got a, um, he, he got the 32 hole where he was incredible chalk and he didn't even get it done. Um, and he made some, made up some progress, but he didn't, wasn't in the winning lineup there either. And so, again, if I haven't seen him do anything and he's going to be chalky, I mean, why? I mean, why do I really need it? So, again, he's going to be hopefully in, in lineups where I only use other low-owned guys. So let me talk about some other guys that I like. Um, uh, Byron, he's fine. Uh, he's in my main. Uh, he, this is not going to be the lineup yet. Uh, he's, he's, he's fine. De Benedetto. now he's going to be... Uh, again, he's going to be really low owned, and, and the, for good reason. Like I said, I mean, he's got to get past all these guys in good positions ahead of him, probably or better. So I don't even know if I'm going to go with him. The, the only thing that benefits him, he's got a 78, 7800 price tag. I'd much rather go with Tyler Reddick at the 24 because you know he doesn't have to pass all those better cars to get there. He can he can get to the top 10, and that could be enough without having to deal with all these other guys. So I think Reddick is going to be a better play than De Benedetto. Um, even though De Benedetto probably is going to be no one's going to own him. Um, here's kind of a kind of a sneaky guy that I want to talk about, and that's Clint Boyer. So here here's my my here's my uh, my mad scientist theory about Clint Boyer. It's it, you're not going to like it. Okay, he's been fine last couple of races. So whatever his his track history is not really good. From the 15 hole, he's really got to get almost top five to get there, so it's going to be difficult. But here's my angle: he has been the uh, the guest commentator for all the Xfinity and truck races pretty much over the last couple of days, and he has been really, really 
eyeing this track. You know, he's been commenting. He's been really having to cast a very um, uh, analytical eye on what's going on with these different track lanes and these, uh, I forget the term they use for it, but there's a reason why um, the, the, the top lane is just so much better. And he's been really watching this more than I think probably any other driver. So I feel as though he's going to have some little sneaky, sneaky, uh, sneaky insight as to what to do. So I, I am going to play a little bit of Boyer on that kind of ridiculous uh, narrative. Um, other guys that I want to talk about, Hamlin. Hamlin's fine, but again, he's got to get past like some really good, good drivers, but he's a good driver himself. Uh, Chris Bell, uh, on FanDuel maybe, but he's too expensive on, on, uh, on DraftKings. So what we could do is we could talk about these kind of cheap, cheap, you know, place differential guys. Before we do that, I want to bring up one guy, kind of a cheap guy who I've, I've seen him do some aggressive things and, and at tiny ownership, I mean, who's going to play this guy from the 14? But so, so Ricky Stenhouse at 7,100, I put like 50% of them, I think last week and he wrecked. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, so I might go back to him this week. I think he's got a good shot. Uh, at low ownership to kind of win a tournament. You know what I mean? So, like, in some of my Bush lineups, for example, I'll put in Stenhouse. Um, now, some of these place differential guys who, you know, never got really right, never got really wrong, but you, know, you can mix and match these guys. Custer, Dylan, Priest, um, LaJoy, uh, the guy I have in here, McDowell. They're all fine. Uh, I don't think any of them are going to be that chalky, so it's not as if, you know... You really need to fade one of them that much. Um, Newman at sixty one hundred. He's a guy again that he's fine because well, the, like, the more I look at it, the reason why I think I'm understanding why Jimmy Johnson is 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 a little bit chalkier is because that range between like the thirteen and the twenty starting positions is not really stacked with a lot of great drivers, so. If you can get through them, you build up your place differential pretty handily. Like, I think Newman can get, like, a top 10. And at 6,100, I mean, that's really, really strong. And I guess that's why it's going to be popular. But um, So, Nemechek, he's supposed to be 25%, but I'm not taking him, I mean, uh, even at 5,300. So, we'll start you off here. Let's let's do something here. So, let's start off with Log the Logano build. Let's start off with Logano getting the front, and this will be our little, um, this will be our, um, our, uh, this is going to be our, just kind of our win the tournament lineup. How about that? So let's, we'll put Stenhouse in here as a low on guy. We'll put Logano in to get the lead, and let's, let's get ourselves a little bit of juice. Let's get ourselves some, uh, what would happen if we went all the way up to Harvick? What, what concessions would we have to make? Wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? So if you can get both these guys down, we just got to save 800 somehow. McDowell at 5,700 is fine. So if we can go back and save some money, or oh, go back to the to Benedetto, we can't do this, right? We can't get away with Harvick, Logano, and Bowman, right? There's no way that can win, can it? It's possible, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, what we could do is we go to Newman at 6,100. And then we can even move up from here. So who do I like the least out of these four? I have to say Reddick. I mean, uh, Stenhouse, right? So what can I get for 8,800? I can go to Jimmy Johnson if I want to. Or I can go to Byron. Yeeks. Um, so if I did that, why don't we do some with Byron? And some with Johnson. Okay, let's try this. So we're going to fi finish this off, and then we're going to go, we're going to do five lineups in the um, in the main, which is the the, the one that, you know, that pays 150000 first. And there's also, I also did a 20 max of um, of the, uh, the cheaper one. So let's do that. And then we'll end up whittling a little bit later. So that's, that's going to be no Bush, no Truex, no nothing. Okay, this is 
you know, it's maybe a little bit chalky with Newman and, and McDowell, but these big guys, I mean, you really are, are, are asking for it because you have no Truex and no Bush and no Elliott. So that's asking for it. So let's see. You want to, so we don't forget, you want to make a Bush lineup. All right, let's do it. So let's put in Kyle Bush over here. Now, if we're going to put in Kyle Bush, I want to use either Almirola or Bowman or both. So let's start with, uh, where's, we'll go Bowman first, and then we'll just do half and half. So we'll do Bowman here, and we don't really have to change too much of this yet. I don't really like the Benedetto from this spot. So um, we can go to Johnson or Byron. So we can go do this, right? So let's do some with Johnson, some with Byron, and some with Almirola. So let, we'll mix and match that one. Okay, so let's do this. Ready? So we'll put that in that one too. One, two, three, four. Four, what we'll do is six from here, and then we'll go six from here, and I'll show you why. Four, five, six. Okay, and the reason why we did that is now we're going to go through and we're going to change Johnson to Byron. So we'll diversify that way, and we'll do one, two, three, right? And we'll go one, two, three. Is that good? Okay. Um, and then we'll use Bush and Laney. Okay. And then what we'll do is now we're going to go through Bowman and we're going to place him with Almirola. Boom. And then so we'll do this again. One, two, three. I should go one, two, sorry, and then one, two, boom, and then we'll go back into this one, and we'll go Almirola here, Almirola here, and then we're going to go one, two, oops, one, two, and then one, two. Oh, so now this is 18% Almirola and 11% Bowman. So we want to get a little more Bowman. So let's change this one back to Bowman. Boom. Is that good enough? So now Bowman is 16, Almirola is 14. Okay, that's fine. So what we've done now is made a Bush lineup, okay, and we went kind of off the board with Bowman, okay, and we went some Johnson and some Byron. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make an Elliott lineup because we don't have any of that yet. So what we'll do is do some with Harvick and we'll do some with Logano. Okay, so let's change this up. Where is Chase Elliott? So Chase Elliott, we'll put him over here. So this is going to be easy, okay. We'll just replace Elliot for Harvick, and then what we could do is we can move up maybe here, and we can get to Blaney, right? So we'll go Elliot and Logano like this, okay? And then we're going to go one, two, three, and then we'll go one, two maybe, okay? So that's an Elliot, and we'll make another. Uh, this one we'll do Elliot with. Um, so this one we're going to go Elliot with. Um, what's his name? Harvick, right? So here we'll go Elliot Harvick. Change this to Elliot and Harvick. And now we have to go uh, really low owned over here, which is fine because we have to save all this money anyway. So let's go to, <coughs> we want to go probably again, Bowman. We'll do a little Bowman and a little Almirillo, right? Uh, do this. Here we can play some Cole Custer. We don't really like the Benedetto, as I was saying. Now we could do some of this stuff. We can go to Stenhouse. 
and then we could do we could do Austin Dillon if we want. Go to Priest. This is this is actually pretty badass. So let's do this, and we'll go one two, and then we'll go. Actually, do this one two three here, and then we'll go one two three here. Is this good? Actually, we'll go four here. And we'll go four here. So now we have a little bit too much Bowman, I think, but we're going to change some of this to Almarola, right? So let's change a little bit of this to Almarola. Boom. Almarola, good. And then we'll go one, two, and then we'll go one, two, boom. So we now have 25 book, 25 percent Bowman. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty aggressive. And how much I'm rolled at 23 percent? Okay, so maybe maybe we'll trim a little bit of that back. But again, these are in the the chalkier lineups, right? So what do we have now? So we have 30 percent Elliot, which is fine. Because we have him with Logano, right? Um, so we just have to kind of trim these and maybe dechalkify these a little bit. Um, how much Stenhouse do we have? We have 18% Stenhouse, which is fine. We want to get ourselves some Boyer, right? So let's, and we probably want a little less Blaney and a little less Reddick. And definitely less Benedetto. So we have to we have to change this a little bit. Let's go back to let's get some more of these um, these other guys that we haven't looked at yet. So you want to get a little bit of Truex. So let's so let's get a Truex lineup. So if we we're going to get a Truex lineup, what we would do is we would need again somebody that's not high as highly owned. So we have no Bush and no um, uh, what's his name. No Bush and no um, and no uh, Elliot. So here we could put in some Kozlowski if we want, um, but I still think I want to stick with Harvick here. So we could do Harvick and Truex, and then what you could do is then you can go with stuff like Stenhouse. So let's take the Benedetto out, go back to Stenhouse. Reddick is fine, and then. Boy, can we get away with this? More Bowman and Almirola? That's asking for it. So let's just do this. Let's play a couple, another place differential guy. And probably have a little bit too much Reddick. So what else can you get for this? Oh, so now you can get Boyer. Okay, so this is this is fun. So now you get Harvick as you're going to be your dominator. Truex is your chalk. And then you get Boyer and Stenhouse out of his 14-15. I like it. Okay. So let's do this. One, two, three here and then one two three here and one of these okay very good okay um so this is basically the idea you know so we're getting some boyer i'm going to probably trim and get less little less stenhouse but this is kind of the idea is to only take like the bush lineups with kind of you know, wild stuff underneath, like Bush with only Bowman, okay, Bush with Almirola. I don't think I have Bush in a single lineup without either Almirola or Bowman in it, which is which is obviously very risky, but that's what you get when you want to fade some of this chalk, okay? Um, I guess that's pretty much all I want to do. You know, you know what we could do? I mean, if you want to watch me play around a little bit, um, may as well. So you don't need 34% Stenhouse, right? So if we get rid of him, what can you get for that? Um, you could play Bubba Wallace. That could be a nice low-owned shot. Again, same type of concept is that these, you know, we want to get him into the top 10. So we could do this. And you get Harvick and Truex as your dominators and everybody else kind of coming from back there, which is fine. So let's do this. Let's do this one. And then we will do um, this one. And you'll see our, our, our ownerships kind of get a little more, more reasonable. So Reddick at 66%. I mean, this is going to be too much, right? So 
Uh, we'll trim him back a little bit. We don't have any Eric, any Eric Jones. So with this one with Logano in it, you know, and no Elliott and no Bush, then you could get a little bit chalkier and you could maybe play Eric Jones. So um, I'll go ahead and do that. And you see why I'm doing one of each and sometimes two in each one. And that's just basically so that, you know, I could then go whittle a little bit more and diversify a little bit more when I get there. And yeah, I could do this with an optimizer, but I do kind of like to see these kind of by hand as much as I can, right? Now, the next thing you obviously notice, the McDowell at 82%. That's just, that's just not happening, right? So um, we, we can end up, you know, we could do a lot of LaJoy instead of him. So we can just go ahead and just do a mass, I'm not saying mass one, but let's just do this, like for example, boom. Get a bunch of him out that way. And then here, get a bunch of him out again, more LaJoy. Again, yeah, we gotta be careful not to take too much LaJoy. Two, and then one here. Okay, and then this one. Uh, we can even play some priests if we can afford him. I don't think we can in this one. Um, and this 5700 one. Just want to make sure we're done. We can play some Nemechek, who's going to be fine. I mean, not that great, but just maybe a couple with him. A couple with him. And you'll see the McDowell ownership start to pare down a little bit. Custer, 34. Now, again, Stenhouse, we're going to have to obviously get him down a little bit. Um, but you see, the, you see the idea. Want to play a little more? All right, well, I got a couple more minutes. We'll play a little bit more. What have you? We only been going for what? Thirty minutes? So we'll we'll do a little bit more, and then we'll then we'll call this, um, and then I'll I'll obviously finish this off outside of you uh, you watching. But a little less Custer, a little all right. So a little less less McDowell again. I got two hundred more. So let's see if I can get up to anybody better, um, or just going back to the guys I've been playing already. Busher? No, I'm not going to play him. Maybe a little more. Maybe like two more lineups with with. Um, with him, with LaJoy. And then the next guy I'm probably going to come up with is Priest. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do a double. So what I'll do is I'll do this one. So I have a lot of Blaney. What I'm going to do is I'll take him out, do more Priest, and I'm going to have to come down from Blaney in this lineup, which is fine. Okay. Maybe this one. No, I can't do Truex. That's a th I can do Boyer. This would be an excellent one. This says Bush and Amor. Oh, that's, that, that could, you see, that could win. I mean, it could win because it's just so low owned that it can win. Let's put it that way. Uh, Custer, 34%. LaJoy, 32%. McDowell still is a little bit too high, 55%. So we're going to have to trim him a little, a little bit. The Benedettos, 15%. Um, I don't know how much I really want of him. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'll, I'll, I'll X out the Benedetto, and then I can see what I can do with this. Like if I take out all this to Benedetto, what does this get me? I can get a little of this. I can get some Ty Dillon, who I wanted anyway. And Cole Custer. So let's do that. But is that going to be too much Cole Custer? Well, we'll find out later. Let's for now, let's just replace all of that. So now I have 43% Custer. So now I'm worried about having too much of him. And McDowell at 45%. So I still have to get a little bit of Dow out. And now I have a little bit of Custer out. I want to get some more Ty, Ty Dillon in. So what we'll do is, let's see. We'll get rid of... Um, uh, this is good. We'll take this one and this one. Custer, a little less Custer again, and we'll do a little more Ty Dillon. I really like the way this is working out. I mean, again, still, still got to win, but um, I really like the way these lineups are starting to materialize here. Thirty-four percent Custer. That's actually not bad, but I still want a little more Ty Dillon. So let's let's spread out that ownership a little bit more. I don't want to like really ruin uh, lineups with a bad opinion. Uh, this one has Dillon in already. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that one. Uh, this one. Okay, so this one will do. Ty Dillon over here. Not bad. Uh, yeah, but the problem is this is all in the same lineup, so I, I want to keep that. This one, keep that. So we still have a little bit too much McDowell. Maybe, 
maybe a little bit too much cluster. So let's let's do this. That one I like. So how about this one? This one will do more Ty Dillon. And again, we'll probably go back and So McDowell, 45, a little too much of him. We're almost done. Probably a little too much Reddick also. So, so let's get rid of both these guys. We'll get rid of Reddick and McDowell from just from this build and replace them again. And we need more Ty Dillon, I think. So we'll put him over here. And a little Bubba Wallace, again, which we talked about. Um... We'll just put him in these guys. And you'll see that, like, very, very little that I need to do. Like, this one, I need to do something. So, uh, this is fine. This is fine. Maybe a little bit too much Stenhouse. So, let's get rid of him. And this, a little bit of this. Um, yeah, maybe some Bubba Wallace again. Okay. see how much duplication there is. So this one I need to change something. This one is kind of happy about this. But let's get rid of some Byron, I suppose. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of happy about this one, though. Put a little less, little less Custer. We'll put a little more Priest in there. How about that? Does that work? That works. And we should be pretty much done now. This one has no duplication. This one, this one we need to change a little bit. So this one will do a little less Reddick. We don't have enough Eric Jones probably, so we'll put him in. All right, so very, very little needs to be done here because we only have, you know what I mean, we don't have a lot of duplication in here meaning that we don't have two of the same lineup in any contest, I believe. Maybe when we get down to here, we might have to do some things. No, not yet. We should be good. Excellent. All right, so we're good to go. Hopefully you guys uh, learned a little something about how I struggle through this. And um, don't get too chalky today. And a lot of lot of different ways this can go today, as opposed to these infinity races, which is which uh, we kind of knew what was going to happen beforehand. Um, all right, that's it. Uh, good luck to you guys, and uh, see you guys next week.